Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm finally doing a video that I, like, I've been planning and talking about for almost a year. And it's part one, because I couldn't do this all in one video, of my best and worst mascaras. This is the container. The reason I'm actually making this video is because I ran out of room in my drawer. I literally could not close the drawer on this. And the reason I kept all these empties is because I wanted to keep them for this video, but also keep track of how much mascara I was using and really have something more to look at. So these are the mascaras that I've been using for the past year. I've used a couple of them at the same time. I've mixed a few of them, layered a couple of them, but for all of these, I have used them for the full three months that you're technically allowed or recommended to use eye products for. And as I, as much as I wanted to do one video with all the best and worst mascaras, with as many mascaras as there are out there, I can't. So this is going to be part one, and it's taken me about a year to get to this point. So if you guys like this idea, let me know if you want to see a part two, because I already have a few mascaras that I want to include in that one, because this one is not comprehensive, but it is part one. And I think it is a good split. Half of these are incredible, half of them are drugstore, and then half of them are horrible. And there's so many Venn diagrams about how that works out, but let's jump into it. I really want to start with the worst ones first and then move to my favorites. Okay, so starting with kind of like the worst, let's start with a Wet and Wild mascara. Now, there's only one Wet and Wild mascara that I've tried that I've really liked, and they reformulated it. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on in this video, but for the most part, Wet n Wild mascaras are not my thing. This is the Max Fanatic Cat Eye Mascara, and it's like this huge bottle, and I, I need to show you the wand because, yeah, so it's supposed to give you like that cat eye effect with this, but really this just irritated the heck out of my eyes and I got no lift, I got no separation, I, I got nothing from this mascara. It wasn't even like a good mascara to just like make your eyelashes black before putting on like falsies, like no, I got nothing from this. Well, that's a lie, I got irritation from this. <laughs> so no, I'll talk about that other Wet n Wild mascara later on, but this one was a definite nope from me. My next nope comes from Revlon and this is the Volumazing mascara. So this one has a bit of a better brush. I will say the brush is actually pretty nice. It's almost an hourglass but not quite. Nice and fluffy and it's not irritating. The, the problem I see with a lot of drugstore mascaras is that their wands are just really irritating to like your eyelid and to your eyelashes and it can make your eyes water and then sometimes if it's not waterproof it's like your whole look is ruined, right? <laughs> I have plenty of stories about that. But so the brush on this isn't the problem, it's the formula. This, again, it didn't give me anything. It just turned my lashes clumpy and not in the good way. There is a good clumpy. This is not a good clumpy. It transferred like hell. Whenever I put this on, I would immediately get transfer up here and transfer down here. And even if I, I put it on and then like immediately tried to like fan and dry myself off, no. Could not get this to work, not worth it anyway would not recommend. The next mascara I have, so this one's actually from Avon. We have a family friend that sells Avon and my grandma orders from her like all the time and I've never tried Avon makeup really so I thought I would try out a couple of things and I just grabbed a mascara. So this is the Avon True Color Wide Awake Mascara. So this wand is, I need to like zoom in on this because it's a bit weird. So do you see how it like twists? Yeah, so a bit of an interesting concept for a wand. Uh, I didn't feel like it gave me any advantage over a regular mascara wand. If anything, it was a little bit harder to use because of the wand, because it's made to twirl up, right? But when you do, it's hard to do that. Like, you twirl it up and you're just like, Ugh, and then like it gets everywhere and no. So the formula wasn't great. It didn't transfer horribly, but I got nothing out of this. I didn't get any curl on my lashes. It, by the end of the day, my lashes were just like this and they were just black. Yeah, not really worth it. And because of this, I haven't ordered anything else eye related from Avon, so. 
Let's move on to a, uh, a bit more of a higher end mascara. This one is from Butter London and this is the Double Decker Lashes. And can I just say that this is actually like bulky packaging for a mascara. It's actually like pretty big. <laughs> so let's take a look at this brush. It's actually pretty nice. It is again a bit thicker, but I do like how the bristles are on this. If this had a good formula, this would have worked really well, but mm, surprise is in this part of the video, it did not. I just remember having to like watch my face when I wore this because I got such bad, not transfer, but flaking. Like I would put this on, it would look okay, but it wouldn't look amazing. And then by the middle of the day, I would have to make sure I checked my makeup because I would see like just little black flakes along the sides. I don't remember how I picked this one up, I think I might, I honestly, I cannot remember. It's been a year, <laughs> but I remember not liking this at all. I tried mixing it with some other mascaras and layering it and it just, it made everything flake. Next, I have a mascara from Wander Beauty. So this is the Unlashed Volume and Curl Mascara. And I will say I did like the packaging on this a lot. It's like a squeezy tube and you pull this out and then you've got your brush. And the brush is actually curved in a really nice way. So it actually like grabs everything and applies the product evenly. The problem is that the formula isn't good. I didn't get any curl. It never looked good when I applied this mascara. It always looked clumpy. Like I had to go in with a different brush and kind of like touch it up. And I would always get like extra product like on my eyeshadow and you don't, want that or need that when this is like practically your last step in your routine so not a fan i'm pretty sure i got this in a box of some sort but no all right we're on to the last bad mascara guys it's gonna get positive soon i swear it's gonna get great so this is from milani and this is the lash trifecta lengthen curl separates mascara it's like the little blue bottle so this one i can't say anything bad about the formula but this Gosh, man. I feel like if this formula had been in the Wander Beauty packaging, maybe we could have worked something out. So I'm already through the three months with this, so I wouldn't use it again. But if I were to do this again, I would probably just put this brush in here and just do that. Because <laughs> I probably would have worked out a hell of a lot better. But hindsight is 2020. The brush on this actually irritated my eyes to the point where like everything was red. I cannot stand this little plastic bristle brush thing. I felt like I was stabbing my eyelid with these. It was horrible. I know the whole point is to like do like your lower lash line and everything, but I can't get over the brush. You need a good formula and a good brush. And I have plenty in this drawer that have both, both affordable and high end. So do not worry, but this just did not work for me. And I know I talked about that like workaround, but if I'm buying a mascara, I don't want to have to like do this extra work to make it work when I know that there is like a $3 option out there that is perfect, you know? So this was a, a huge nope. Okay, so before I move on to my favorite mascaras, let's talk about the one that's kind of in this middle ground. And this is the Wet n Wild Mega Length Mascara. So this is the older packaging and older formula. This was like the perfect lower lash mascara. So. This brush, while it might look a little similar to that last Milani one, this is so much better. It did not irritate my eyes. The formula did not transfer. And this is basically the only mascara I could really use on my lower lash line. And it would stick throughout the day and it would be amazing. You could also like layer this on your upper lash line if you wanted to really separate, because that's what this does. It really separates, coats, and just holds the curl, which is all you need. All I could ever ask for. It's affordable, but recently Wet n Wild redid the packaging, redid the formula, and I've heard from plenty of people that the newer one is nothing like this. I have not picked it up yet because I've had all these mascaras to work through, uh, so let me know if you want me to try that one out, because uh, this really only vouches for this older one and how much I liked it. Now we're moving on to the best and the brightest. Let's start with one of the first higher end mascaras I ever really fell for. This is the Vark, Vark, Jesus. 
This is the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. Now, this isn't the only one I've gone through. This is like a deluxe size. I've gone through a full size and two sample sizes and then this one of this mascara. This is such a gorgeous mascara. It's got a great hourglass wand, very much like the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara, which I, I also don't like. I really don't like. I don't have an empty in here because I've been avoiding it for as long as I can because I used a full size one and a sample one and it didn't work for me at all. But this brush looks a lot like that one and the formula of this is incredible. I used to preach that you never had to spend high-end prices or anything for mascara until I tried this one out and I had to reevaluate that because this was such a good mascara. Coated every lash. This was an example of a good clump because by clumping a good clump means that it looks like you have many lashes like more lashes than you actually have and they kind of still fan out while they're looking clumped down here if that makes sense this is a great clump it looked great it dried down really nice held my curl did not transfer oh loved this mascara so the next mascara I'm going to be talking about is from NARS. This is the NARS Climax Mascara, and this is actually such an awesome mascara. I will say with this on the tip of the applicator, I do see it does tend to clump product there, so I always make sure I make sure to like clean it very well before I use it because that can cause some issues. But it's a nice thick brush. It's just slightly hourglass. If you can see, it just pinches in a little bit in the middle, but not really that much. It's a really nice size, and the formula on this was amazing, especially when you layered this. It was such a good layering mascara because it wouldn't really hold a curl necessarily per se, but it would coat everything and separate incredibly. So if you mixed this with a, uh, a mascara that really held the curl and stayed put, perfect. So this was actually a really good mascara. I wouldn't buy the full size knowing that I liked it best when I was layering it, but this was an excellent mascara. This next mascara I really, really enjoyed. I went through several little minis, deluxe sizes, and a full size. This is the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara, and I loved everything about this, including the brush. So this is a unique brush in that it looks... Uh, it looks a bit different. Let me zoom in. So it looks a bit like odd and kind of disjointed like nothing is like evenly spread out really but it's great at grabbing every lash and separating this is another example of a good clump mascara because i did see it really filled in kind of the gaps on my lash line like towards the bottom and then it flared out all my lashes and this was just my one stop shop for mascara this did everything that i needed it to do it lasted well throughout the day no flaking no transferring Ugh. and like i said i've gone through several of these this was such an amazing mascara i really don't have anything bad to say about this but i do still have a couple of other mascaras that i liked a bit more the next mascara is one that i actually talked mad trash about in a weekly wow and then i tried it out and i loved it this is from Milk Makeup, and this is the Kush Mascara. This wand is a bit different. You do see it's like very thick here on the bottom and then kind of tapers up to the top. This worked really well just for getting a more, um, what I'm trying to say, for getting a more uh, cat eye kind of effect. Like, I think this is kind of what that Wet n Wild mascara was trying to do, but didn't quite get. So you do get this really nicely. The formula on this is, you, it's, it's honestly one of the best. Like there's two mascaras above this one, but this is incredible. I loved the formula. I had big voluminous lashes. Like there's one mascara above this one that really does make it look like I'm wearing falsies and this one also had a similar effect. And really the only reason that this next mascara, the last two are kind of like the king and queen of mascaras for me. But the only reason why this next one is going to be above this one is because of the price. So most of these ones that I've been talking about are higher end and they're a bit more expensive. So that's one of the downsides is that uh, it's kind of a lot to spend on a product that you can really only use three months and then you have to get rid of. But this next mascara is really never more than four dollars. 
and this is the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara, the green bottle. Didn't really like the other bottles. I think it was a purple and a red bottle. Go for the green one. This is the best affordable mascara you'll ever find. The wand is a bit unique in that it is very thin, but if you really zoom in and look at the bristles, they're firm and they're spaced out evenly, so you really catch everything. I'm wearing this mascara today. I I can't get enough of this. The price point is amazing, especially for how long you're going to be using it. It makes my lashes look amazing. I never see transfer. I never see flaking. I never see anything bad with this. And the pr you really cannot beat the price on this. And this works so much better than a lot of other higher end mascaras. And it's $3.99. So now my last favorite mascara. We're going to go from the best of the best affordable to um, something a bit ridiculous. But I have to say out of everything that I've tried, this has been my favorite. And this is from Shanta Kai, and this is the Faux Sils Mascara. So this is an incredibly expensive mascara. I first tried out a little deluxe size sample, fell in love with it, tried another deluxe size sample, still loved it, and thought, I'm gonna finally actually pick this up. This is an $80 mascara. No one in their right mind needs a mascara this pricey, but oh my god, did it not work in incredible. Let's take a look at this brush. It feels luxurious to use. I never had to mix this. The formula is amazing. Just, let's just say it was amazing enough to get me to actually purchase an $80 mascara. I mean, that's got to count for something. I actually went out and got this after testing it. So these are so far in what I've tested out in this incredible makeup landscape, the best of the best, one incredibly affordable, one ridiculously expensive. So take your pick. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you liked my mascara roundup. Like I said, this is really just going to be part one because I'm sure I'll be trying out plenty of other mascaras. Let me know down below what your favorite affordable mascara is and what your favorite a bit more high-end luxurious mascara is. If there are any mascaras you particularly want me to test out, also leave those down below. Thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.